So I'm back here in a very nostalgic place, a Brent Cross, outside Brent Cross tube station. Obviously, the hardcore OG viewers will recognise this from the start of walks with Nick Papadimitro way back in the day. There'll be more of that as we go on, but the feature of today is that I've got, you can see in the background there, this is like life imitating art, imitating life, imitating art again. I've got Liv and Milo who are filming the walk as well. So whether there's going to be a little bit of a kind of filming a man, filming a walk or not, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting cross-pollination. We'll work that out as we go along. But what we're going to do today is actually bizarrely, all the times I've walked in this terrain here, I've not just set out to walk the River Brent from here at Brent Cross, really, which is basically where the start of the Brent is, down to the Western Avenue, A40. That's a section of the River Brent I haven't filmed. I filmed the rest of the River Brent. I filmed, obviously, as you know, I filmed loads around here with Nick, but not specifically focused on the Brent. The Brent would kind of pop up as we pass. So the focus is the River Brent. Obviously, there's lots of great stuff on the way. I'm really looking forward to it. As you may remember, I'll do that actually. I'll add on another bit as we go up towards Brent Cross Shopping Centre. That's our first place. There's this kind of mad confluence of arterial roads up here. You've got the Hendon Way, the North Circular, loads of others, I don't even know what they are. And on the far side of that, we find the North Circ, sorry, on the far side of the North Circ, we find uh, Brent Cross Shopping Centre and the River Brent. All this kind of growth here, this nature beside the horror of the roads, just makes me think of Richard Maybe's unofficial countryside. I don't know why I think about that more when I'm over on the west side of London than I do on the east. If shopping centres are the cathedrals of the consumer age, then approaches like this really do kind of echo that, don't they? This is like some sort of uh, approach to a Mayan temple complex, to a sacred spot. The sacred spot that contains a St. Anne Summers and a Neil's Yard Romanes. And I imagine a particularly large Primark. here it is, the River Brent, one of the great rivers of London and the focus of our walk today. So I made a video of a walk along the, the Clitterhouse Brook. Sorry, this is a mistake. I meant to say the Dollis Brook. I have walked the Clitterhouse Brook with um, Nick Papadimitro actually uh, in February 2020. It's the Clitterhouse Brook and it rises in uh, Golders Hill Park and then flows down and hits the uh, Brent opposite Brent Cross Shopping Centre. But it is the Dollis Brook, the Clitterhouse Brook is a, is a tributary of the River Brent. Sorry for that. Which really is like the continuation of the Brent, just a little bit further north of here, not very far away. And on that day I was like, I must come back to walk this section of the Brent between here and the Western Avenue, A40, is the only bit of the Brent I don't think I filmed, I'm pretty sure, well, I know it isn't. Well, filmed it as a focus, like I say, I've done a million walks around here with Nick Papadimitrio, some of which like the London Perambulator, uh, which hopefully you've watched, it's on this channel here. And then we did a video, well, the, one of the very first YouTube videos I did here, 2000, which I shot 2005, posted when YouTube started, 2006. Wow, that's mad, isn't it? Um, that was around the terrain further down. But the river was just an incidental. There'd be a few shots of the river. So it's going to be interesting doing this walk today, fixated on the course of the river, with the river as its focus. So it looks like these early stretches of the North Circuit isn't massively accessible. In fact, I don't know how accessible it's going to be along its course. There is a bit of a parkland bit where we can walk beside it. I'm really looking forward to that. And there we have a, a votive offering to the deity of the River Brent, which of course is a character in Ben Aranovich's amazing Rivers of London series of novels. So we're just going to take a, a brief detour for, you know, practical purposes into the Brent Cross Shopping Centre. 
Um, so I might carry on. Thank you. And I remember coming here in the, in the 80s with my mum. It was a really big deal because, I mean, this opened in 1976 and it was the first, the UK's first out of town shopping centre, the first, UK's first out of town shopping mall. So it was a really big deal. And I guess we must have come here in about 82, 83, I suppose. I remember going to Phoenix there. And this is the Geographia Atlas from the 50s. You can see, look, this is where there's the Hendon Way. That's where we came under the flyover, and this is the, the area, if you like, where Brentcross Shopping Centre is. And further on down there, you've got the uh, Hendon Greyhound Stadium, which is, would have been down there somewhere, where, near where that Ferris wheel is, actually, I would have guessed. Just on the other side of the river. And it's interesting in the sense that the out-of-town shopping centre, the out-of-town shopping mall has come into being in the UK in my lifetime and when I came here in the 80s it was a brand new shiny thing and now the move is to bring things back into town and city centres isn't it we don't want things out on the periphery anymore we're going to try and think, bring things down into the city centre town centre to attempt to try and get people out of their cars so these things could come into being and become obsolete all in the same time because they're built around the idea of, of people living and moving around in their cars, the whole landscape is altered to accommodate this. New roads are built, arterial roads, people leave their front door and arrive in a place like this. So the whole landscape has to be altered to accommodate them. It's kind of against thousands of years of urban development. It is fascinating to, uh, to look at that period of development where in the 50s is an American development in the 50s where they decided it was partly I think done in conjunction with the petrochemicals industries where they said let's let's move everything out of the town center which goes back to the Greek idea of a city I can't remember what the is it called umphalos umphalos um, the, but the agora that was it sorry the agora the marketplace a lot of our marketplaces in English towns and cities go back to when the Romans were here. They probably go back before that. So towns were built around this central market and all the sort of civic buildings were there and everything was around the town centre and people lived around that. And then in the 50s they said, let's destroy that, let's smash that to pieces. Let's take everything and move it out onto the periphery. Let's move it out of the city centre. Let's move the people out of the city centre and let's get people in their cars driving to these places. They're just built around cars spread everything out and of course it completely altered the urban landscape completely changed it I mean there is an attempt to try and reverse that trend a little bit but makes you wonder how successful it will be there are some uh, there are some massive rats down there beside the river there were about three or four and they've the biggest ones have run away that's the smallest one that's left but they could be water bowls I guess couldn't they I feel like we have to take the invitation of this path down to the riverside, the riverbank, and uh, disturb the rats. Right now, we are actually surrounded by rats. There's this one here, it's not going anywhere. And just to my left here, look, they're in the, they're in the undergrowth. I mean, maybe they're not, maybe they are water bowls. such an interesting kind of juxtaposition of this world down here on the River Brent with the discarded trash and the rats and just the other side of the road is this kind of cathedral of consumerism. Is this your car? There's a really strong smell down here of rotting fruit and food, decayed food. Interesting experience going inside <laughs> Brent Cross Shopping Centre. Of course, one of my favourite scenes in Patrick Healy's amazing film, London, if you haven't watched it, I don't know why. <laughs> no, go and watch it, it's an amazing film. Uh, we're gonna try and not get run over here. Thank you. And in Keeler's film, London, um, the main character, the unseen narrator, Robinson, he goes to write poetry I think that's what he's doing, a right in Brent Cross Shopping Centre because he's uh, invoking 
the world of Walter Benjamin and his famous study of the Paris Arcades, the Arcades Project, and Baudelaire, the poet, the flaneur, the flaneur in the arcades. I've talked about that a few times, not least when I was in the Paris Arcades last summer. Um, and he thinks, well, a flaneur, a modern flaneur, would spend their time in Brent Cross shopping centre, sat beside the fountain there. The fountain, I think, now is gone. But you can see that kind of cathedral architecture with the domes, the twin domes. Makes you want sugary things as well. It's great to be back on the river. Back to some, well, I was going to say, look, I mean, the pollution down here is pretty awful, but it's wonderful to be back. It was an interesting side quest into Brent Cross. It's interesting that in all my walking around this area with Nick Papadimitri, I don't think I've ever walked along here because the river was never the focus of our, of our strolls, of our explorations and investigations. I'm pretty sure this fun fair here is on the site of the old uh, Hendon Greyhound Stadium. Could be wrong. Well, this must be a particularly auspicious spot, judging by the number of votive offerings down there, the number of shopping trolleys. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and uh, a line bike and another one just further up. Also the site of the Spring Fair, got to be something going on. And there's, uh, there's Liv and Milo down there, doing what I do when I, <laughs> when I walk with Ian Sinclair and when I walk through here with Nick. Wow, on the other side of the bridge, it really is a shopping trolley graveyard down here. Look, so many. This is where shopping trolleys come to die. To be honest with you, I don't really quite know how we navigate <laughs> the way ahead. It's going to be quite, I think we have to go, I think we have to leave the river for a little bit. Um, because of all the roads here, we've got the M1 through there, the Great North Road, the M1. So we're detouring through the enormous Brent Cross uh, car park. And then we're going to go through a short section through a housing estate, then uh, back to the river. We might not be able to go the way that I thought I mapped out. So there's a little ramp there that's blocked off. So we may have to go towards the M1, towards that confusion of roads. Who knows, this is a real magical mystery tour. So we found our way to the sanctuary of the housing estate. So we're gonna go along here to the Edgware Road and then we will reconnect with the river. So there's the M1 motorway. <laughs> our route takes us beneath it and the river is to the left. To a degree we are haunted by past walks. Uh, I made an episode of our radio show Ventures and Adventures in Topography with Nick down here and we recorded down there near Brent Cross Shopping Centre in 2010, the summer of 2010. That's 13 years ago, which is, um, which is interesting. That's why I'm here, look, it says Brent Cottage. This road here is the A5, which I think pretty much follows the route of Roman Watling Street, which, as uh, John Higgs writes about in his book, is actually a much, much older road than that. It's thousands of years old. So I've just bumped into Rakim, who's Hello, the newest subscriber to my YouTube channel. How are you doing, Rakim? I'm doing good. Are you local? Yeah, literally around here. Well, look, I want to get, I'm following the river, I want to get on the other side of the M1. Can we go yeah, down here? Gonna, I'm coming that way as well. You want to follow me? Let's do it. Let's do it. We've acquired a local guide. So what is that, what is that you talk about? I go on walks around London. Oh, is it? So this one, I'm walking along the River Brent mm. from, uh, from Brent Cross down to the A40. So you want to go on the other side? Yeah, this one, I get to the, well, I want to get as close to the river. Yeah, I want to get on the other side. I want to go that way. And here is the river, the River Brent. It's a great brick viaduct over there. I've missed a little, a great little bridge, but I'm not sure if it's accessible there. How lovely to meet Rakeem. What a really lovely, charming fella. It's really, and he's helped us out with, uh, with directions as well. well. It's lovely to have those interactions. Thanks, Rakeem, and thanks for subscribing. Hope you enjoyed the rest of the, the walks. And Rakeem tells us that we can cross over here and get into that industrial estate, which would be fantastic. And here's our river 
we're going to go into a sort of industrial landscape now part of the West London industrial belt looks like some pretty nasty pollution down there and this is one of those interesting little back ways you wouldn't normally go down there's a fellow living in his caravan down there and I think the we can't go straight on, we have to go, we have to loop round, we have to go around, back onto the North Circular, and I hope we can get into the Welsh Harp Reservoir. And that's quite a vista up ahead. This is a quite harsh walking terrain. There appears to be a, a jet aeroplane up there in that self storage unit, just randomly hovering above the North Circular. Great to see you, Johnny. Thanks for watching the video. It's fantastic to meet you. Good luck with the running. Cheers, mate. This is a fantastic bit of roadside dereliction here. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? The river is on the other side of that building, by the way. There's a this strip of shops here is all boarded up. Looks like it's no longer viable, but there are flats above where people are living. Right beside the horror of the North Circular Road. So we're turning off the horror and the noise, the intense noise of the North Circular onto an Eastern Recreation Ground, it's the Welsh Harp Reservoir, which is where, which is fed by the River Brent, but we'll talk about that. So this is the, uh, this is the amazing Welsh Harp Reservoir. Uh, the River Brent runs into it at one end and exits on the other side. And this water, I think, is also used to um, feed into the uh, Regent's Canal. There's all sorts of stories about the Welsh Harp Reservoir. There was a menagerie here at one point and a bear escaped and ran amok in the local area or caused terror. So somewhere over there, the, the River Brent is exiting the Welsh Harp Reservoir and carrying on its merry way. Just a little bit more road walking now heading towards the river as it leaves the Welsh Harp and carries on through Wembley into Tockington. So we're going to cross Blackbird Hill, Neasden here, and of course the Welsh Harp and this street here are in the terrain of this other London in my book. So this here, this little watercourse here is the canal feeder and this goes into the London canal network. I erroneously might have said the Regent's Canal, I think it goes into the Grand Union Canal. We will cross the canal later on. And now we go into Quaint and Street open space and we should be able to get beside the River Brent just straight up ahead. And here's our river, the River Brent, free of its concrete culvert, meandering as it was always intended to do. just crossing the canal feeder here which at this point flows right next to the river. And I think at this particularly auspicious spot we have to do quite a big detour. We have to go all the way round down to the North Circular and back to Stonebridge Park. So this is one of the great nodal points of London. This is the Neasden Tube Depot. So all the tube, well, I don't know, all the tube trains. I feel like now I'm straying into Jeff Marshall territory, but yeah, this is a very important place for, for people that are into trains and tubes and all that, but I've never been. They have open days. I should definitely go one year. Interesting that a lot of the street names here are named after places in Buckinghamshire. We have Chesham Street here. 
Aylesbury Street is over there. As many of you will know, I'm from Buckinghamshire. And later on the walk, there will be a Wickham Road. What's going on? So got to walk along the North Circular for a, a bit again, which is um, the perfect time for a service station meal deal. not entirely convinced this is the right way, but it is a nice bit of subway action. We'll, so. we'll be in the film. No, that wasn't the right way. I have to go through this metal tunnel here. I'm pretty sure I filmed here before with Nick many years ago, 2005, summer. And there's the tube tracks. I think in a lot of ways this must be one of the most sort of unsympathetic walking landscapes in London, I reckon. Having done half of a very long detour, I'm wondering whether there is a slight efficiency. We're gonna to have to double, we're gonna to have to double back on ourselves all the way around Tesco's, all the way up around there to pick up the river. If we can cut through the other side of this car park we can save ourselves a chunk of road walking. Maybe. If not, we'll be walking all the way back again. We're going to attempt one of the most dangerous and hazardous things you can do on an urban walk. We're going to attempt to navigate our way through IKEA, especially an IKEA car park. Wish us luck. If this video never emerges and they just find the camera, you'll know why. First, we are reacquainted with the canal feeder which is a blessing. So now we're navigating our way through this housing estate here and hopefully there's a footpath that takes us back onto the Brent. This will feel like the biggest achievement of the day by some distance. Wow, and there it is. Actually, I, I have surprised myself, I'll be honest with you. And I bet I've surprised Milo and Liv as well, but they thought we were going to have to go back to the North Cirque. So they're probably quietly quite relieved. <laughs> you can imagine what it's like following me around, <laughs> trying to make a document of this, because obviously, like I said to her, I'm going to make this up as I go along. We'll just find the part. I don't know the, the route and getting lost and having to find our way, doubling back on ourselves. That's all part of the narrative. That's all part of the process. I wouldn't skip that for all. <laughs> I mean, if I skip that out, I'd have nothing left. And here we are, back beside the Brent. That was quite a significant detour. And like I say, we passed through the bowels of Ikea to get here. But now we are here. I guess we're only about halfway along the walk. I don't know whether how that will be represented in the video, but yeah, it's taken us about three hours to get this far. Good view of Wembley Stadium over there and I can already hear the revving engines of the motorbikes going to the Ace Cafe at Stonebridge. So down there, I think that's Monk's Park Recreation Ground. And this was the subject of the first walk that I did for the radio show, Mobile Nick Papadimitrio. In 2009, the first episode really, or the second episode, Adventures and Adventures in Topography. We went looking for Gordon S. Maxwell's Monk's Park. Chapter 11. Rural England, four miles from the Marble Arch. Monk's Park I found, after some difficulty, for a mile away in ugly industrial Willesden it seemed quite unknown, to be a small community of houses amidst the fields on the road to Harrow. But it is the other side of the road that holds the real attraction, for these houses look out upon a scene that I should imagine no others in the same radius from London are lucky enough to do. They look upon low-lying meadows. A hundred miles from London they would be called meads, through which the little river Brent winds its tortuous way. Oak, elm, willow and mountain ash grow by the banks. I wandered through these meads and explored the banks of the river for a couple of miles. Never in its whole course, I should think, does the Brent wind so much as through these fields. It is always meeting itself, coming round the corner in a most unexpected but very delightful way. 
The old half-ruined and disused sluice gates which we came upon rather add to the picturesqueness of the little swift flowing stream. This curious object warrants further investigation. I mean, there's a plaque. Excellent, this is the uh, base of a flagpole from the Twin Towers of the old Wembley Stadium, presented in June 2003. Isn't that fantastic? And this is also the landscape of Patrick Keeler's first film called Stonebridge Park. I think it was a view he got from a train and he came back to make a film here. So we've got another chunk of road walking here, back beside the, the North Circular Road. So there's the famous Ace Cafe, the famous bikers cafe. I've never been in because I don't ride a motorbike, so I feel like I can't. And here's the River Brent running behind the Ace Cafe. And you can see how much bigger it is now, wider, more of a mighty river that it is. And there's a huge amount of new development here going up beside the Brent. On either side, there's got one, two, at least three or four big blocks of flats going up here. I think Milo and Liv have been consumed by the landscape back there. They stopped to examine a fly tip and, and they've never been seen since. Oh no, there they are. There's still a, a little bit of distance to go, but already I can tell this has been a kind of transformative walk. It's been an amazing experience. It's been a, a really great walk. So by the Wembley Travel Lodge, we turn here and now we can walk along the river. I think this is the last section where we can walk along the river. This was one of the main industrial zones in London, the West London Industrial Belt. I don't know how many people there were. Something like three quarters of a million people worked here at one point, I think in like the 40s, 30s and 40s. I could have that figure completely wrong, but it was a lot of, it was a six figure number of people. It, down Queensbury Road with the river running on our left. We've seen some of the most intense fly tipping on this walk that we've witnessed. And we, I mean, I have suspended the old fly tip of the year award, but if I hadn't, today it would have been multiple entries. This vista here doesn't change at all. When I was down here in 2014 or 2015, I can't quite remember, I think it was 2015. That view is the same. I think you've even got people living down there. I love this bit here. And there's that wonderful brick viaduct down there. It's my favorite point on this walk, I think. You can't beat a footpath that passes beneath such a grand viaduct. On this walk, along this watercourse in its entirety, you have two of the most magnificent viaducts you're going to find anywhere. If we go uh, north along the um, Dollis Brook, there's that fantastic viaduct that we pass through. Links below. And of course, carrying on down the Brent, Towards the Thames, you pass through the Warncliffe Viaduct. The Warncliffe Viaduct, the first listed building in England before Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle or anything. The Warncliffe Viaduct was listed, which is magnificent. So there's something about the Brent and the Dollis Brook being kind of the continuation of the Brent, which spawns these majestic <laughs> brick structures.
we can just about glimpse the river down there and its culvert. We can certainly get a better view of it if we look back here. But the next view may well be just up ahead from the, uh, from the A40 Western Avenue, which will be where the walk will end. Possibly one last view here of the river, another last view of the river before we pick it up again at the end of the walk on the A40. So we're just going down Alperton Lane to get to the A40. No view of the river, just the industrial estates here turning their backs on the river. I love this time of day, perfect time of a walk. This uh, iron work here once belonged to something more grand than a scrap metal yard, that's for sure. I wonder what was here? A water treatment works, perhaps? We sell the biggest, strongest boxes in the Northern Hemisphere which are naturally made in Britain. There you go. And uh, an artillery gun here, just randomly in this car park, this bus depot car park, just in case things get gnarly. Beautiful old industrial building there. So now the final stretch, just along the A40 Western Avenue to the last view of the Brent at the end of this walk. And this is where our walk will end, as the River Brent passes beneath the A40 Western Avenue. And continues on the other side there, and I'll post a video below, a link to the video below, where I walk that section of the Brent down to Brentford. The noise is extreme, isn't it? Well, thank you for joining me on that magnificent walk along the River Brent from Brent Cross down to here, the A40 Western Avenue. Like I say, I'll post the link below to the, the rest of the walk along the Brent down to Brentford. And thank you too to, to Liv and Milo back there for making their own record of this extraordinary excursion. So as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. I don't think I actually know. I've got an idea actually, but who knows, you know. See you then.